everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Underwear News Briefs podcast. It's been a little while since we've actually done one, but we're coming at you with a really good guest this time. We have Matthew Butline, from, who's president of Fresh Pair, joining us. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Tim. So it's going to be really cool to talk to someone who's really involved in the industry, who Fresh Pair, as many of you know, is one of the biggest retailers online for underwear for men and women. So I don't think many of our readers know that there's a women's side to your site, but there is. So they cover pretty much everything in the underwear business. So let's get right into it. So what do you see, since you carry a lot of the biggest brands in underwear today, what are some of the trends that are happening sort of like in the men's underwear market that you've noticed, like, say, in the last six months to a year? Um, I think one of the biggest ones is that we've seen a, a huge shift from function to fashion. So if you look back, you know, one or two years ago, you saw a huge uh, shapewear trend. Yep. Uh, not that, not that the, the lessons from that went anywhere. Um, I think the, the actual functional uh, Aspects of underwear have, have really improved, you know, pouch construction, some of the cuts, um, the seaming on them. Um, but they're not as function focused. It's it's using all of that, all of those lessons, all that that new construction that was developed to uh, to really package that in a just a a very fashion forward, attractive uh, package. We've seen we've seen actually basic styles now come in a, a, a much wider array of colors, prints, and stripes. And we're kind of seeing the decline of white. So you know, much more color, many more prints, um, and a lot of black. Yeah, I would agree with that. I've noticed that color has really started to come back. Um, one of the biggest examples, I think, is uh, Puma's been doing a lot with color lately. And not traditional colors you see in men's underwear, so... So that's been refreshing to see. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I've always been curious, actually. Um, you know, the, the whole shapewear trend was all about making you, you know, you look better under your clothes. Um, but I, I can't help wondering whether the, the trend towards, uh, like, men's fashionable and colorful underwear is because it's meant to be shown. Yeah, and I did a podcast a while back with a couple like Sean from Ozzy Bomb and Andrew Christian. And it's always like, oh, underwear is what you seem to show certain people. It's like just not everyone, but certain people get to see your underwear. And I think with the colors, it's coming more that you actually get to see the underwear, not just oh, only certain people see it now. Yes, it's fun. Actually, um, Mario Lopez just launched the line, uh, Rated M. Um, and and their, their tagline actually is, is for manful men and their very special guests. So it's that same sort of idea about, you know, having something that, that really looks great um, for, you know, those you choose to share it with. Yeah, and I agree with the colors lately. And prints are, I think, are another thing that you mentioned that really seem to be taking off more and more every year. That we've sort of saw it a couple years ago, but nothing's really happened until like the last year and now it's sort of taken off you get in these prints that even the mainstream underwear companies are starting to actually do because a lot of them have been pretty pretty safe for the most part they'll do their solids but nothing more than like a stripe or something so that's really good to see yeah we're, we're seeing some uh i mean we, we just had a photo shoot today. I, I, I saw some, some great <laughs> animal prints, um, some, uh, some plaids, some great stripes, uh, a lot of color, just color everywhere. Color is good. Now, animal prints are something that I think is going to be bigger this year. I've noticed it last year. I think Cox Cox started with their carnivore line, and others have sort of taken on with it, which is pretty cool, and it's not the traditional, okay, it's kind of tacky animal print. It's actually doing something really cool with it, so that's refreshing to see. And, yeah, yeah, and uh, it's also some, some of the more, the more mainstream brands, um, even if you don't create an entire uh, pair of underwear in animal print, if you just put animal print accidents, it, it has a, a very, very interesting effect, and I think it, it's still still palatable to that to that customer yeah it's not because like i told friends of mine i was like when i told them about the cock socks 
carnivore line. They're like, what? I'm like, no, it's not the tacky from the 70s, 80s. No, they've actually taken it in a different direction. And they're, um, who was it? Another company a while back, I think it was DMK, did like animal prints, but re- changed out the color. So they were like purple and different colors as opposed to the regular bl- brown and orange. So that was pretty cool. So, so it's very interesting. And we were talking before the podcast that men's underwear seems to have sort of not sort of a bad rap and not getting the publicity it needs. So could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I think that's, I think we're seeing underwear kind of come out of the underwear drawer. Um, you know, even 10 or, or 15 years ago, I mean, you saw mainstream media reluctant to, to talk about it. Um, but, but I think with even the, the recent trends you're seeing with David Beckham and Mario Lopez actually being the, the face and body of these new underwear lines, I, I think you're seeing people start to get more and more comfortable with with underwear as an acceptable topic of conversation. Uh, it's, it's no longer the, the unmentionable. Yeah. For women, it's kind of always been there. It's always talked about. You have all the commercials, but men's underwear has always been sort of like, oh, no, we can't talk about that. So I think that one thing that's really impressed me with the David Beckham line, the rated M line, is we have someone who is a mainstream celebrity endorsing underwear. It's not just okay, here's somebody's line, but it's just a real person. So, and I think it's, I know Radio M's gotten mainstream coverage with Mario Lopez being on, what is he on, Extra? Yeah. And then David Beckham being all over the world, especially with H&M. So, so I think that's very cool. Yeah, we actually, to that end, we actually launched, uh, <laughs> we tried to get uh, National Underwear Day Added yep. as a national holiday for exactly that reason, because underwear just it doesn't it really doesn't get that that respect. Um, and initially, when we launched it, it was kind of like a novelty story for the media, like oh, you know, this this company hired models to walk around the streets of New York in their underwear. Uh, you know, they just put it on sort of as a, a fun segment. But you know, as the years went on, it became a, a more and more serious movement. Um, even I'm not sure if you're familiar with like the No Pants Subway ride. Yes. I just, I love that that, you know, it's all becoming a lot more mainstream. You'll see that covered even in, in very mainstream, mainstream uh, news channels. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just, I know in the last, we started the blog, started the blog three years ago, and it sort of changed in that entire time from the coverage. And now it's like, oh, okay, more and more. Because I think before, everyone considered people who liked underwear to be the gay market, and people who liked regular were just the, the rest of the market. And now, with the whole metro movement, people wanting to be comfortable, wanting to have something different, it's sort of taken on a life of its own and evolved into something bigger. So it's not just one segment of the market buying underwear anymore. So. Yeah, but it, 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 it's also the segments of the market that are comfortable talking about it online. So yeah. I think we've finally gotten to the point where I think the, the majority of the, the market is, is comfortable seeing this discussed, advertised, and shown online. Um, it was, I think, just uh, five years ago that we tried to actually launch a, a banner ad campaign. And I, I don't know if you've seen any of our advertisements, but it, yeah. it's the... You know, the stuff that we put on, on mainstream sites is, is, is very tasteful. Um, you know, we're, we're just talking about a better way to, to buy your underwear. Uh, but any, first we, we wanted to use a picture, uh, a picture with a model in it, and they rejected that. Uh, and they told us that creative was inappropriate. Then we wanted to just use the product by itself, just a, a flat shot of the product on a, a colored background. And they said that we couldn't do that. So finally, we, we asked to use silhouettes just black outlines of, of um, underwear, and they declined. They still, they still said that was inappropriate content. So finally, we had to just go for uh, essentially a text ad with a design, and, and that, was, that was not too long ago. Wow. I'm trying to think if I remember those. Yeah, because your current ads I see in different places, and they're pretty, they're pretty, they're not, provocative i mean i've seen worse online way worse for some of the brands but 
it's yeah. I've run into a similar thing with Facebook ads lately. It's kind of like, okay, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't show this, which is still kind of odd. I'm like, huh? But I think advertising luckily is changing. I know uh, they have billboards in Times Square now with underwear. So I've seen those recently. And have they done, did they do one for Rated M? Did y'all do one for Rated M? Or am I thinking of someone else? I'm sorry? They didn't do a billboard in Times Square for Rated M, did they? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to... Th- I don't remember. But I know I've seen them in Times Square. I know David Beckham was there, so it's changing and ever-evolving, which is a good thing, especially for us. And the funniest thing you mentioned about that is we do what we call brief distraction, which is a picture of underwear every day. And we did it about about a year into the blog and I kept worried I'm like okay we're going to run off straight readers as opposed to gay readers is a way to get traffic but I'm like ugh but the funniest thing is we've had more actual feedback from like straight readers about the brief distractions than the gay readers so it's been total opposite of what I thought it would be they're always like we're going to get it this is great love this picture give us more of this brand which is really interesting which I was not expecting when I started the blog so it is interesting. Why do you think that is? I don't know. That's something that perplexed me. Because when I did it, I'm like, all right, we need to do traffic. And that was a great way to get traffic. Because we keep it to a, either a brand, a retailer, photographer, or model in the industry. It's our four criteria for running them or occasionally a reader. But I'm like, so I figured, I'm like, oh, we're going to run some people off. But like I said, the straight readers have been like, okay, I love, like one love the behind the scenes pictures. So anytime there's a behind the scene picture of a model shoot, he loved it when to write in. And other ones would write in, what is the, we get a new brand in. It's like, what is that brand? Where can I get it? And so it was just very interesting. It was not at all what I was expecting. It was more, okay, that's odd. But it's worked out, and we profile a lot of different new brands, So, and it's a good way to get exposure for them, and people love seeing them. So it's kind of odd. But, but, I, but I, I, love all, I love that all the attention that it's getting has really, I think, really benefited everyone Yeah, uh, in, in the sense that I think now even the, the manufacturers are, are paying, you know, a lot more attention to the the latest technology in terms of, of uh, construction. So we're seeing we're seeing a proliferation of the, the fabric um, that's used to create underwear. So, so microfiber was always a very small segment of the, the underwear market, but now it's the fastest growing. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's been amazing to see uh, it just take off. And, and now most brands they'll have a, a cotton and a, a microfiber option. Yep. Uh, we're, we're, you know, also seeing all of the, uh, like the temperature regulating fabrics. The, I, I love, uh, actually love Icebreaker. I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah, they're out of New Zealand, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Actually, um, it's it's fantastic. The, the stuff lasts forever. I mean, it, it's such high quality, and uh, it's made of merino wool. Oh wow! Which is the, which is the first, uh, to my knowledge, the first. Uh, undergarment application of that that we've sold. So it's uh, it's been a really interesting interesting time for for us in the industry because there's there's all this innovation and it's it's happening yeah. at a, a much more rapid pace than I think it's ever happened before. Yeah, I'm, I've noticed that with a lot of the different manufacturers are stepping up and trying new materials they haven't tried before, which is very cool. Uh, different construction so it's lasting longer which is really good because we get readers who will send us emails i hate so and so it lasted two washes so that's really cool to see that and uh i think as we get more and more involved i think a lot of the manufacturers are actually looking at how long this is going to last keeping it so that people aren't just wearing it twice so but that's just that's just my opinion so we'll see if it happens, but, and I think the materials are something that's really changed. Like you said, in the last two years has really changed. It's no longer just cotton and nylon. They're doing the microfiber. The bamboo was big a couple years ago. Um, 
and other materials are coming along every day that make underwear a lot more comfortable. And I tell friends who who don't who who still buy it in the six pack, which drive me drives me insane. I tell them I was like, once you get gun underwear, you will not go back. And I've had one who's helped me with her site believe believe me because I paid him in underwear. It's like I can't pay you right now. I'll pay you in underwear. And he got it, and he's like, um, "These are really good." And I'm like, "Told you." <laughs> it's it's completely true. It's completely true. I was like, "Consider." <laughs> Let's go ahead. Oh, oh I I, um, I don't know if we can talk about swimwear. As sure. Well. Uh, but some of the the swimwear that that we've seen this year, the, the fabric has been so just. I haven't seen any of the swimwear this year. Hopefully, we'll see it, it ne- next week or next month. Yeah, the, the the fabric the fabric is so luxurious, and and it's it's so interesting. One of the uh, one of the two exists pairs. Oh yeah. It actually looks. Looking at it, it looks like seersucker. Oh, it looks like it. it yeah, it looks like a you know a seersucker suit. But it, but you can obviously you know get it wet and it dries very very quickly. Um, yeah, you can you can almost wear it as as outerwear as well. Um, very cool. Park and Ro- Park and Ronan have this this twill like fabric that actually feels like a pair of khakis. So you can even pair it with like a, a button down shirt for a, for a casual look. Nice, yeah. Swimwear, I noticed. I've looked this year coming up is really. I'm impressed with what I've seen so far, and I haven't seen I haven't seen too much of it, but it's really getting out there. I think more and more guys are paying attention and not wearing the the long baggy board shorts. They're actually wearing something else, which is very very cool. So, yeah, we've we've seen the the hottest selling style. Hottest selling style on our site is the uh, the mid length swim shorts. Yeah. So I think it's the I think as like the the slightly relaxed fit and length that that just falls just above the knee. Yep. Yep. I've seen that, and I was trying to think. Some someone else I was talking to the other day was talking about swimwear this year that it's it's not going totally short, but it's getting a little bit shorter. It's getting a lot more fashion conscious. That it's not just okay. We're not just going to have black and white and whatever is going to change up a little bit, which is very cool because we cover underwear, swimwear, and a little bit of active wear. So, so it's very cool. I think men's swimwear is about time. They made a turn around to something a little more fun because we've been stuck in that board shorts for too many years. <laughs> it's all the same, all the same. And now it's like, okay, we got something cool coming down. So let's, let's see where it goes. So, so tell everyone just before we go, we're about at 20 minutes, but tell a little bit about Fresh Pair. I'm sure many of them are familiar, but for those of who out there are not, tell them a little bit about the company. Sure. Um, Fresh Pair, we, uh, we've been around for about 12 years. We feature over 100 brands of, of men's and women's underwear, uh, probably the ones you're wearing right now. So everything you'd find in a, a department store and a, a whole lot more. Um, you know, we try to make it as convenient as possible. We have free shipping on all U.S. orders and inexpensive uh, flat rate shipping to over 90 countries. We founded National Underwear Day and actually just uh, just launched a program, uh, a subscription program. So once you find your, your favorite pair of underwear, you can subscribe, have it delivered to you automatically um, at whatever interval you choose. So if you know you love a particular pair of Calvin Klein briefs, you can get them delivered to you every one through 12 months. Wow. That's news to me. Very cool. I'll have to write that up on the site. I haven't seen many, I mean, we've seen the underwear of the month, but that's the first time I've really heard of that going on in the industry, which is very cool. Because I know many people who forget to buy their underwear until the last minute, and they buy it on a regular time schedule, so that would be great for them. So, Cool. I'm saying National Underwear Day is a great day that I always forget about until the last minute because uh, it's it's always on my calendar and then it comes up on the blog and I always forget about it until the last minute. So, well, don't a, worry, we'll we'll definitely send you uh, an email reminder this year. Good, because everyone's like, "What are you doing for Underwear Day?" And I'm usually two days before, and I'm like, "Oh darn, that's in two days." 
Uh, it's like, ah, oh, not again. So, so very cool. Now I've shopped there many times, so it's a great, it's a great website. You can get some really good uh, underwear off the site, and I keep forgetting about your free shipping in the U.S. Even though I see it every time I promote your sales, I always forget about it until when it comes to buying. It's like free shipping U.S. Yay! So. I guess that's it for this podcast. We're right at 20 minutes, which is a good thing. So I um, guess you can go check out FreshPair.com. And we're always running this special. So check under our sales brief for the specials. And thank you for coming on the podcast today. Thanks again for having me, Tim. <laughs>